Kevin Allen. I love him. His style, you know, so fetch. But, you know, I hear he gets his bags off the black market. Sad. Well, I feel bad for him, really. Oh my gosh, guys. I don't know if you heard this one or not, but I heard that Kevin Allen used to be a Lady Gaga roadie. That's right. He followed her around all the time and they gave him a job just like carrying her stuff in and out until there was like a cease and desist. But I, no, I heard it. Seriously. I think he really was. One time, Kevin Allen punched me in the face. It was awesome. Oh my God, guys. I heard that Kevin Allen sleeps in a coffin. Oh, what? <laughs> so, Kevin. Okay, I heard that Kevin Allen made out with a 90s boy band. The whole boy band, too. I mean, it was in like 2021, but still, he did it. <laughs> yeah. Let me know when we're live, okay? We're live? Okay. Welcome. I am Johnny Smellmore, and tonight we take a look into the newest rising star of YouTube, Kevin Allen. Tonight on this primetime special, we are going to ask the hard-hitting questions. Who is he dating? What are his fashion influences? And what are his faux pas? And most importantly, is it cheese? Stay tuned for this action-packed luxury special event. See you soon. What do you mean he's not showing up? You know, I told Vogue no so I could come do this and now nobody's even gonna show up and be professional. I mean, what is this? Now you're telling me that I've got to read these questions by myself and I don't have a cameraman. What, what is this? I'm, I, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I came here to do this for my fans and this is how I'm going to be treated. No, I don't think so. What's up, everyone? Um, we had some technical difficulties, but I am a professional and the show must go on. Um, I don't have a host that should be asking me these questions. The cameraman didn't show up. So um, I wanted to do this. Like I said, I'm a professional. I got my drink. So um, I'm just gonna go through these questions and we're gonna have a good time and to dig deeper into the YouTube studios of Kevin Allen. So, cheers. All right. Let me gather my notes here as um, I gotta do everything myself. The camera's not working. I do apologize. That's better. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Inside the YouTube studios. The first question, which design houses have had the greatest impacts on my buying purchases? Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that, um, I think it's pretty safe to say that both Coach and Louis Vuitton are my pretty much one and twos. Um, the, the the thing about Coach is, whenever I was younger and the younger in the early two thousands, I would purchase Coach items on special occasions for my mom. 
birthdays, Christmas, things like that, I would go into the boutique or I would go into the outlet and I would buy her something and um, it would, you know, brighten her day, things like that. And then the older that I got and the more places that I've seen it, it's something that I started to dabble into myself. My first luxury piece that I ever bought myself was a Brahmin wallet because my best friend at the time, her mom was really, really into it. So I kind of, that was like my, my first like designer piece. And then I started every few and far between, I was able to afford something coach for myself. And Louis Vuitton, like for a lot of people, before they get into it, before they get into luxury, you know, they, they see Louis Vuitton and it's like the, the biggest status. Like that's what you want to achieve to, um, like in high school and stuff, I had heard, you know, Louis Vuitton. I knew, you know, what, what the brand was, what the brand meant. But, um, as far as like actually paying attention, it wasn't until it wasn't until Mark Jacobs took over and everything that he did with you know the fashion house that that really like put it on the map for me and then in the mid like 2000s I got a Louis Vuitton half sleeve and I kind of used that as like a vision board because I was like, well, if I think about it hard enough, I can put myself in a situation where I can start affording Louis Vuitton. And that's kind of what happened. So yeah, Coach and Louis Vuitton will always be my, my two mains for sure, for sure. Um, when you dress for the day or for an event, what do you think about? Impression or you know, a statement and uh, an impression or a statement I'm making. Um, whenever I was younger, I would try to wear whatever I thought was cutest. Now that I'm much older, a lot of it's for comfort. If I go out to like, if I go to an event or if, you know, the, the rare happenstance that my husband and I get to have like a date night, I'll put on, you know, like, you know, Louis, Louis earrings or, you know, a Prada hat or something. But for the most part, the, the statement that I, that I think that I make most whenever I leave the house, whether it be for work or running errands or just going out for like coffee or something, it's to smell good. You all know, like I've said many, many times, smelling good is feeling good. And if you feel good, you feel invincible. So... More than anything, especially in the last few years, although I've always loved scent, in the last couple years, it's it's been all about scent. And I would rather smell good than look good. So, what turns, what turns me on creatively? Um, authenticity. Authenticity turns me on creatively. Um, Seeing other people like thrive and be successful, I I try to take things from what other people are doing creatively and apply it to my everyday or apply it to whatever I'm doing. What turns me off? Um, narcissism, ignorance, um, anybody who thinks they're better than you. I mean, that, that, that's really it. Those are arrogance, ignorance. Yeah, those are the things that I hate the most. Or things that turn me off the most. Um, how do you celebrate big events in your life? I have a very, 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 very small circle. I don't have a lot of friends. I don't hang out with a lot of people. So, whenever I do have like a birthday 
or I get a new job or something like that. I really don't celebrate as far as like buying stuff because I'm just the type of person usually if I like something like I'll just buy it. Uh, you know, whatever I, whatever I quit my job a couple months ago, that was a huge, huge milestone for me. So I did buy myself some stuff for ending that chapter of my life. But as far as like, like birthdays and stuff, I usually just buy whatever I want throughout the year and I don't make a big deal out of, you know, out of something just because it's an accomplishment. Like, I'm alive. I think that's, like, accomplishment enough. Um, who or what inspires my everyday life? I inspire myself, honestly. Um, just waking up and being alive. That, I think, inspires me personally. Other people believing in me. Whenever I don't believe in myself, that inspires me every day. And of course, I mean, universally, music inspires me every day because I don't have one specific thing that I'm into or listen to. My my music interests, my music tastes are an evolving, revolving door, if you will. What traits or attributes attract you to other people? Humor. You gotta be funny. Um, I like when people aren't stuck up. When people aren't afraid to be stupid. And like let their guard down. And I think I'm so attracted to that because I've had issues with that all of my life. And like having walls up. So... Being around other people that are already comfortable in their skin and are that extremely funny and are like-minded like myself, I think, are the, the, the biggest things that attract me to, to people. Five objectives, five ad objectives, objectives that describe me. Um, I think I'm hilarious. I am irreverent. I'm tacky at times. I'm unapologetic. I don't know if that's five, but, um, favorite word. Um, it's something that I can't say on YouTube, but, um, <laughs> something that I, a word that I get a good laugh out of. And Winnie said it in her video, anytime, not so much s like saying the word, but anytime I see the word turquoise in print, I always say turquoise in my head, always. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not like something that I say out loud a lot, but if I see it in print, I automatically say it that way in my head. Um, least favorite word? Can't. I can't do this, or I can't do that. What traits turn me off in people? Um, it kind of goes along with the other one, narcissism, um, racism, homophobia, um, just being a douchebag, not wanting to earn things for yourself, not wanting to work, um, what sound or noise do I love? Puppies running in leaves and the coffee maker. And the ding that my phone makes whenever a package has been delivered. Um, what sound or noise do I hate? Oh, man. I hate the sound of chewing. I hate snoring. And I hate ASMR. Um, whispering is okay sometimes. But for the most, like, I don't like nails or stuff clacking on stuff it makes me to jump off the porch um what prof profession other than my own would i like to to attempt i always wanted to be 
a veterinarian ever since I was a kid until I lost my first pet. Um, I kind of blew that out of the water. I would, I would still like to work with pet, with animals in some kind, just not in an area of expertise that I would be in a position to see them die or anything like that because I'm just a real sap for animals. Um, what profession would I not like to attempt? Nursing. What has been one of the most formative challenges to overcome? Um, other than like being myself, whenever I was younger, I'm like coming out, that was a really, really big deal for me. And I got bullied a lot. Um, whenever I was in middle school, I got bullied so much. I had tried to, you know, hurt myself. Luckily it didn't work. Um, those really few formative years before high school were just really, really tough. I was very lucky and very fortunate to make lots of friends in high school. And I never got bothered after middle school. But for a couple of years, it was really, really rough. Recently, um, our, our baby died right at the beginning of lockdown when COVID happened. He was like the love of our life. And uh, that was the time in my life. He was, he was 10 years old, he had a stroke. He was a, he was a rescue dog. And that was one of the hardest things that I've ever went through. Um, even more so than like losing a family member or losing a friend. That was, that was one of the hardest things that I've ever been through. And, and then our Dahmer baby, he came into our lives and really changed it at a time that I kind of like lost hope in a lot of things. Um, five people dead or alive I would like to have dinner with. Dolly, Gaga, James Dean, Bill Hader, and Viola Davis. Two celebrity hall passes. Um, Chris Evans and John Krasinski. Three celebrities I'd like to have a drink with. Ooh, that's good. Lizzo. Um, Amy Poehler. And Kate McKinnon. Which song lyrics do I connect with and why? Well, um, I actually wrote some down because... I have a very, like most people, I have a very emotional connection with music. Um, it sounds really, really cheesy, but it has absolutely saved my life more than, you know, a few times. If, um, if you guys have ever seen the tattoo that I have right here on my inner arm, it is, um... Paramore lyrics and the song that it's from is called Brick by Boring Brick and what it actually says is if it's not real you can't hold it in your hand you can't feel it in your heart and I won't believe it I anytime that I ever heard those lyrics before getting that tattoo and even still for me it means like you know love you know um, and just authenticity. 
you may not be able to like physically hold love, but you know it when you see it. And that's just, it's something that's always like really, really like spoke to my soul. Um, another one because Gaga's music hands down has literally saved my life. I've been in real, some really, really bad dark places and her music has definitely pulled me out of a lot of bad places. Um, she's got a song called Highway Unicorn. It's off the Born This Way album. And the lyric, we can be strong out on this lonely road, on the road to love. Whenever me and my husband met, it was the the year that album came out, and things were crazy in both of our lives whenever we collided, whenever we first met, and there was just a lot of music that came out around that time that neither one of us can like listen to without getting physically emotional. So a lot of that music and a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the music like really really holds a very special place in my heart um the song we found love by rihanna literally the entire song um that song literally culminates like how him and i met so and then a recent song that i absolutely relate to that I feel deeply because, you know, like so many other people, I struggle with anxiety and depression. It's mostly anxiety nowadays, but it's also from another Gaga song. Um, it's from the song 911, and the lyrics are turning up emotional faders, keep repeating self hating phrases. I've heard enough of these voices, almost like I have no almost like I have no choice. And it's just inner saboteur. Um, it's in all of us. I, you know, I've, I've stayed in positions and places in my life far longer than I needed to because I didn't feel like that I could get away or that I could get out. And that's, that's how that, that's how I see that for me in my heart and in my mind um asking for help and admitting that you need help is always the it's always the hardest part um okay so you're spending the next 12 months on a desert island one book one movie one tv series one album one book would be Running With Scissors by Augustin Burroughs. If you have not read that book, please go buy it. There, there was a movie that came out about 10 years ago with Gwyneth Paltrow. The, the movie actually did a good job because it's almost verbatim from what the book is. But um, he writes a lot of books, a lot of memoirs. And he's a, he's a queer author. So, of course, I, I identify that way. But definitely Running With Scissors. One movie. Um, mean Girls. It's just the most rewatchable movie for me. Mean Girls or Endgame. One TV series, The Office. I have watched every single episode of The Office at least a hundred plus times. I have Jim and Dwight tattooed on me. It's just my go-to. If I just wanna hear noise, if I wanna laugh at something stupid for the hundredth time, yeah, The Office. And one album. Um, this might come as a surprise because you all know how much I love Gaga. I would, could not pick one album of hers. So the album that I would take would be Wisconsin Death Trip by Static X. That album came out at a formative time in my life. And I think it's one of the best metal albums of all time. And I think it's one of the, just the best albums of all time. Um, 
put together a playlist, song to get out of my head, song to get in gear, the song that gets me on the dance floor, song that I love to sing at the top of my lungs, and song that it evokes a stirring memory. Okay, so the song to get out of my head would be Probably Rose Colored Boy by Paramore. Song to gear up for work or workout. Um, probably anything by Panic at the Disco, honestly. The song that gets me on the dance floor. Any, like, Deborah Cox, any of the, the Thunder Puss remixes. Or any of the old Thunder Puss Tony Braxton remixes. Song I love to sing at the top of my lungs. Heartbreak Hotel by Whitney Houston or um, It's Not Right But It's Okay by Whitney Houston. Song that evokes a stirring memory. Wow, that's a good one. Um, oops, I did it again. Britney Spears. That song came out at a very funny time in my life. I was working at McDonald's at the time when that song came out. Um, there was a promotion that McDonald's run, ran with the, um, the little headphones that came out. The, there was a Britney Spears one and there was an NSYNC one and they sold them. And in the commercial for the promotion, if you were to go in to McDonald's and ask somebody there to do the Oops, I Did It Again dance, in the commercial, they would do it. Well, the McDonald's that I worked at at the time, I was the only person there that knew the dance. Because, so I don't know how many times I actually did that, did that dance during that promotion and then I went on to do it in like weddings and stuff. So yeah, that song definitely stirs stirs the memory. Um if heaven exists, what would God say if you walked in? Well they're just letting anybody in here now, aren't they? That's it. I hope that you enjoyed this. I honestly had a blast doing this I've been I've been thinking about this tag a lot I have to specifically shout out Winnie B LV and James Jam at the time that I'm recording this those are the two ladies that had tagged me I um I watched both of their videos and I had like guttural reactions in a good way to to things that they both said and the, the stories that they had. So I wanted to kind of give it a few days where it wasn't so raw for me. But um, I had a blast doing this. Thank you for everyone that had anything to do with this video. I love you guys very, very much. And um, I'm gonna get out of here. I will see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Peace, guys.